Good morning, and welcome to Little Rock Original Frugal Baptist Church. I am Jerry Godwin, and we will be, be bringing you the Sunday School lesson uh, for today on April 14th. Um, if you haven't done your taxes in the United States, it's time to do them uh, for tomorrow. And the lesson is taken from Luke chapter 24. And I just want to thank you with all my heart for last week, and apparently... Um, you have invited others to listen, and um, that's the way we want to grow. And in this, today's lesson, it will, it's important to understand that we carry our, out our mission to tell the whole world about the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. And as I said last week, this is a YouTube thing that right here is um, the subscribe button. So. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do, because right here should be the bell that gives you a notification that new videos are on the, on the uh, YouTube channel. So God bless you, and please encourage others to join you and listen and, um, and invite them. Now, today's lesson is Proclaiming and Sending, and it's from the book of Luke. Now, I've never known, I always like to say this because I've been teaching for over 50 years, but I learned something this week that the book of Luke starts in the temple with Zechariah going there and, he, and the announcement being ma made of the birth of his son who becomes John the Baptist. And it ends with today's lesson as the disciples go and rejoice in the temple. Well, I'm going to make a, a little unlike my normal teaching, <laughs> and you're thinking, yay, he's going to do something different. <laughs> well, I'm going to relate this to a child's song that we have sung over the years, and um, it was a lot of fun for me, but I think it gets, helps get the message across. Now, we begin in Luke chapter 24, after Jesus has been crucified, and has been buried and resurrected. And the, as one commentary said, the resurrection and the crucifixion are on the same coin. We can't have one without the other. And so we have, as we studied in last Sunday's lesson, Jesus' appearance appearance to the disciples and, and then with the disciples and, and uh, Thomas. So here we have again Jesus himself stood among them and said to them peace be with you. This peace that he is saying as a salutation, a greeting is the uh, Jewish way of saying um, um, hello or goodbye, and, but he's sharing the all-encompassing peace that his presence, only the presence of God can bring in your life. It's not the peace that is the absence of conflict, but it's the peace that is available to we Christians even in the midst of conflict. Paul, um, Paul wrote in the Philippians, uh, letter to the Philippians, he says, the peace which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, there was a song that we used to sing as a child, and it's funny to me because I never understood as a child what I was singing. Much like a lot of old songs in, during my teenage years, you kind of make up words if you don't know. But it says, um, the peace that passes, I've gotten the peace that passes uh, understanding down in my heart down in my heart and I, 
always said, I, it was mama long, I said, I got the piece of pie that perfect down in my heart. And so that's how I remember this verse of scripture is this piece that Jesus greets his disciples. And it says, they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Now, in my cynical way, I'm wondering, now, how do they know what a ghost look like, looks like? Had they ever seen a ghost? Or are they just seeing Jesus in a different way that they were not sure who he was? Although the women had told him, Mary Magdalene had told them that they were... Um, uh, that Jesus had, had, was raised. He said, He is risen. He is risen indeed. And he, Jesus asked them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Now, there's no indication that uh, if this was when Thomas was there or not there, but he, he mentions their doubts and, and being frightened. He said, look at my hands and my feet. Now, why would he say that? And you should know that, because when Jesus was crucified, the nails were driven in his hands, and a nail was driven in his feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. He says, look at my, touch me, touch me. So he had a different body that had been transformed but it still had human uh, characteristics and it was tangible. He said, go ahead, go ahead and touch my hands, touch my feet, um, because this is not the way a ghost, a body that a ghost has. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And in verse 41 it says, Yet for all their joy, they were still disbelieving and wondering. And he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? So Jesus was able to eat and um, they ended up giving him some fish, some broiled fish. And it, it, I want to go back and say that despite our, um, even when they were joyful, now this joy that they have is because of the grace of God. You, you can be happy and the large majority of the time um, I am happy. I am a, a, a happy person. I have happy surroundings. But this joy exceeds happiness. This joy is because of God's grace. And someone told me one time when I was having some challenges at work, and this person told me, Jerry, don't let, let anyone steal your joy. And I believe in that. No one deserves to be able to steal your joy. And the song, the ch ch children's song goes, I've gotten the joy, 
joy, joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. I've got the joy, but at this moment, their joy was still um, um, contaminated, you might say, when disbelief and wondering and making it a human experience rather than a spiritual experience. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, Jesus said, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. As we have studied the scriptures and we have walked with Jesus in Judea and the disciples have experienced this on a daily basis and Jesus is sharing God's word with them but they don't ever seem to get it. But before we become so easily accusatory of the disciples, think about how many times you heard the gospel message and ignored it. I know I did myself. I understood it mentally, but I delayed in accepting Christ as my Savior. And my friends, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, today is the day to make that decision, to, uh, to admit that you are a sinner, in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and to repent of your sins, to turn away from your sin to Jesus, and profess to Christ and follow him in obedience. And each of us have a, a cross to bear, one on behalf of the kingdom of God. But going on, he says, everything written about me in the law of Moses the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament, and also the prophets, including Isaiah, and the Psalms. All of these things must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Now, that's something to think about. When your minds were opened to the scriptures, and as a, a teacher, I've come to realize, and this is my definition, that learning only takes place when you discover the truth for yourself. A teacher can can stand up and and give you formula after formula, fact after fact, and you never get it. And then one day you have that aha moment. It's the same with learning about Jesus Christ. That he is a, a great man. He is a great prophet. He, he is historically been around for many, many years, and then one day you say, I am a sinner. I need Jesus to cleanse me of my sins. He died in my place, and I want to follow him. And he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he says, thus it is written that the Messiah Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name 
to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. What Luke is telling us is the life of the Messiah. And how much that he loves us. Now going back to the song, I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus down in my heart. And now he's saying, telling to the disciples that you are my witnesses. You, um, of all people, you walk with me you heard me. You saw the miracles. You know that I am the promised Messiah. And now you need, as a witness, you need to go out and tell the world. And that world starts in Jerusalem. And then in Judea. And Samaria. Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world. Think about it. Wherever you are, whether you be in Wilson County, North Carolina, or whether you be in the southern United States, or whether you be in um, Europe or Asia or Africa or South America, then... um, You start where you are and move on from that to go to expand. And then Samaria was disliked by the Jews. John and James and John wanted Jesus to ask God to bring fire down and destroy Samaria. And then we find that after Pentecost that they went and people in Samaria Samaria, heard the gospel and were saved. And then he says the uttermost parts of the world. You know, just this past week I was talking to someone around my age and I asked him, I said, did you ever think in your lifetime that you would have a phone on you all the time? That you can talk to anybody in the whole world if you know the number. And he said, no, I, I never did. And I said, neither did I. But here, and, and would I, I have ever believed, first of all, that I would be teaching Sunday school. That was sort of credible because I've been in this church almost all my life. But would I, I have ever believed that I was teaching the gospel message to the entire world. And if you are listening nearby, God bless you. If you are listening from a foreign country, God bless you. you. You may be the seed that is able to share that message with many, many people around you. And hope, hopefully we may be the conduit of God's grace um, to you. And he says, And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And what is he talking about? He, He promised that he would send an advocate Um, to them when he left. And that advocate is the Holy Spirit. Now, he goes on and says, then he led them out as far as Bethany. And if Bethany was a city about two miles southeast of Jerusalem. And this is where his friends, Mary and Martha, 
and Lazarus lived. And lifting up his hands, he blessed them. He gave God's blessings to them. He gave the empowerment to them. And he says, if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him so the Holy Spirit can come. Um, in the ascension, the disciples do not lose anything. They gain something. Jesus' ascension brings them closer. The ascension brings them closer to them than he was before. And Jesus says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. But one thing Jesus does do is he transfers the responsibility um, to spread the gospel to his disciples. He spreads the need for their compassion, for their hands and their feet to pursue the lost, and their mouths to proclaim the message of the gospel to the world. And when he was blessing them, he was carrying up into heaven and they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. Now, the coming of the Holy Spirit, I added some words to this children's song. I've got the power of the Holy Spirit down in my heart. I've got the presence of the Holy Spirit. I've got the comfort of the Holy Spirit down in my heart. And because of that, can you just hear the disciples talking to one another, rejoicing, and saying, I've gotten a joy, joy, joy down in my heart. And they went back to the temple proclaiming the grace and mercy and majesty of Jesus and his Father and the Holy Spirit. And the word that is used where they were blessing God is eulogal, and from the word that we um, get, eulogy. Now, I've been blessed to do a eulogy or two. How would you do a eulogy of Jesus? I would proclaim his miraculous birth. I would proclaim his ministry. I would proclaim his trial, his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. I would proclaim his love on the cross. I would proclaim God's grace on him that he was resurrected. I would proclaim that I saw him ascending into heaven where he sits at the right hand of God the Father, I would proclaim that he sent the Holy Spirit to comfort me and to teach me and for me to be able to minister to others. I would sing with all of my heart, I've gotten a joy, joy, joy down in my heart. God bless you.